Hey guys, welcome back. We get a lot of questions about what kind of kiln to buy, especially when you're starting off. There's a lot of choices and you could look at all these kilns and the sizes and the price points, the energy draw. And there's a lot of things to consider when you're buying a kiln and when you're shopping for a kiln. So I'm gonna go over just a, a few choices with you guys and kind of a range of different ideas that can maybe help you decide which would be the best kiln for your use case in your studio. Kilns are a critical part of the glass blowing equipment and you are going to need one to blow glass. So thanks for checking this out and let's get started. All right guys, so the first kiln that I'm gonna show you guys is the Gen Ken 119 Analog. This is probably one of the more affordable ways to get into a kiln. Definitely not gonna break the bank compared to some of the other ones out here that, that are more designed for professionals or people making larger work. This kiln can plug into a normal wall socket. You won't need any additional electrical at your house. And this kiln has an analog controller, which is going to make it a little more challenging and focus on keeping your kiln at the correct temperature. So this is an analog controller and it has an analog dial that will allow you to adjust the amount of electricity that's flowing to the kiln to increase or decrease the heat. The only way you can tell the temperature on this one is by this pyrometer. And you're going to have to look carefully and make sure that you keep your kiln approximately 1050 degrees Fahrenheit. Otherwise you stand a high chance of slumping your work or not annealing your work and creating cracks or finished pieces that are non-functional. Every glass blower that's been around as long as I have had to start off with an analog kiln and has a story about slumping their entire day's work in the kiln. You open up the kiln, the next morning, usually it's like Christmas, you open it up and there's just flat glass all throughout the bottom of the kiln. A couple things to consider about that. It's a functional kiln, it will get the job done, but these are some parameters to think about as you're deciding which kiln to get. These kilns also, and specifically kilns designed for lamp working, usually have what's called a kitty door. And this is a door that opens up, this one's on the side, and you can keep your pieces warm while you're working. Keeping your pieces warm while you're working is one of the most important critical steps to making more complicated work because you're going to have to keep a section hot while you work on a section and then take those both out at the same time and connect them when they're both warm. The next kiln that I want to show you guys is the Gen Ken 119 Digital. And this is a bit of a step up from the 119 Analog that we just talked about. The advantage of this one is, is really great. You get a digital controller that's going to automatically keep your kiln at the correct temperature. And that's a big deal for blowing glass because glass blowing is already complicated enough. Having to focus on learning a technique and your pieces and design, and then also consider that your kiln may be ramping up and ramping down in a way that you don't want. I would highly recommend that you spend a little bit more money and get a kiln with a digital controller. In fact, this is one of the only kilns that's sold in lamp working that's, that has an analog controller. It's great if you're on a super budget, but I'd really recommend to not cut that corner and to have a digital controller. This kiln is identical to this one. It's 11 by 11 by nine inches, and that's why it's called the 119. And it also has the kitty door on the side. Um, it's got a lot of space on the inside, as you can see, I'm opening the door for you guys. So you could definitely make a piece, you know, a bubbler, a vase, you could fill this up with spoons and stack things on there. And these even come with a shelf so that you can make two levels, you know, maybe work in the morning on spoons, cover that up with a shelf, and then put in a bigger piece, you know, at the end of the day when you're working on progressing your skill or advancing your creativity. That's the Gen Ken 119 Digital. And uh, this is still on the lower end of price points for kilns, but it's kind of where it starts to become more feasible and easier to use. The next kiln that I want to talk to you guys about is the chili pepper kiln. And this is also from Gen Ken, uh, same manufacturer that makes these ones. And this has become a very popular kiln, especially for those of you who are going to travel to, let's say, a trade show, a craft fair, where you're going to be demonstrating glass blowing, having your workout, and you're going to want a kiln right there with you. This kiln could easily run on a generator, just like these ones. So if you're gonna be doing traveling, this may be something you'd wanna consider. These all run on 120, 
So you're not gonna need an electrician to install a 240 line or check that or anything. I would recommend that these are on a dedicated circuit though, so that you put your kiln on a circuit with nothing else. That's really more ideal than having your kiln shared with other things like fans and lights and other things that you may have in the studio. One of the advantages and also considerations is the interior of the Gen Ken kiln is made out of a material called fiberfrax. And fiberfrax is a silica-based material that's refractory. So this material is soft and lightweight, but being soft and lightweight, you, the compromise is that it will deteriorate over time. Versus the two 119s are made with a material called soft brick. Soft brick is a much more sturdy material and it's not gonna deteriorate nearly as fast. In fact, the only way it deteriorates is if you drip hot glass on it, you, you start carving it. It's a very stable material. Most kilns in the industry are made out of the soft brick. And this chili pepper kiln is made with the fiber frax. The chili pepper kiln also has a digital controller, which is really important and critical to making sure that you keep your work at the right temperature while you're blowing glass. The other things to consider is your use case. If you notice, this door is only a few inches. And so that means that all the work that you're gonna be using and, and going in and out of the kiln with would have to be within those tolerances for it to fit inside the kiln. If you are working and you work slightly outside those tolerances, you're actually not gonna be able to get your piece in this kiln. So you have to consider what your use case is and if your work will all fit through this kitty door on the Gen Ken chili pepper kiln. Some final thoughts on the chili pepper kiln are, it's great for travel, it's very affordable, it's a good kiln to start off, test the water, see if you're interested in it. One thing to kind of consider about Gen Ken kilns is these 119s are only slightly more expensive than the chili pepper kiln, and so it may be worth the extra little bit of money to get a kiln that's made out of soft brick, a little bit heavier, if you're not considering traveling with the kiln. When you're considering a kiln, my recommendation is to go for the best one that you can afford. All of this glass blowing equipment has a high resale value and you want to set yourself up for success. And that means having the right tools for the job. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm here today with the Paragon Bluebird XL. And this is, this is kind of where the kilns start to, to change from really entry level into what you might use more professionally for a longer term. There's a lot of benefits to the Bluebird XL. It's lighter weight and it's more cost effective. So you can get a little bit more kiln space for a cheaper price. That's gonna last a little bit of time. Some of the things to consider with the Bluebird XL is that it doesn't open up past this door right here. So you're gonna have to work within the parameters of this door for all your pieces, unlike the Paragon F-130, where you can open up the door and close the door to fit in a little bit bigger of a piece. One of the th other things to consider, which you know could be a plus or a minus depending on your work, is that there are no exposed elements in the Paragon Bluebird. So that means that when you look inside, all you see is this white refractory board and the elements are behind the white refractory board. So you're never gonna touch your piece to an element or you know touch metal if you're putting metal in your kiln to uh, drop a piece off, you're never gonna touch that to an element. But that's something to consider as you start using this for more and more time. If you ever need to replace the element, it's gonna take a little bit more work and money to get the element into this kiln. It's affordable and it has a lot of features that are useful like the digital controller which allows you to set the temperature at the right temperature and leave it, forget it, just work. It's lightweight. It could even be portable, but you want to consider what your use case is. Are you going to keep your work in a small space? If that works for you, great. Another good use for this kiln you may consider would be a benchtop kiln for pieces that you're, you're heating up, getting ready to, to put together, and maybe once they're together, put them in a bigger kiln. Some final thoughts on the Paragon Bluebird XL is that it's a really great kiln for starting off. It'll allow you to kind of experiment and get in the flow of how glass works. And it could be useful later on as a benchtop kiln as you expand and upgrade into something a little bit more bigger that can handle larger scale work. One of the other benefits of the Paragon Bluebird XL is that it runs on a, just a normal 120 outlet. And that can be really helpful when you're starting off. So you don't have to deal with an electrician or think about your electricity much. 
You just plug this in like you would any other appliance and it'll work. There's a lot of use cases where this kiln would be awesome. And you wanna make sure you think about what your use case is, where your work is gonna go when you're deciding which kiln that you wanna get. Thanks a lot for checking this out. If you have any questions about this kiln or any of the kilns, please use the chat in the bottom right hand corner of any page on the online school. We'll be happy to help you and answer any questions that you have. Kilns, take one, set one. Hey guys, welcome back. Right now, we're gonna talk about the Paragon F130. And this is a great mid-level kiln. It's not the most expensive and it's certainly not the cheapest, but it is a kiln that you get a lot for for your money. This kiln has a lot of space on the inside. So you're, you're not gonna outgrow this kiln very fast. You're gonna be able to use this kiln for years and years. And eventually, if you grow and have multiple people in your studio, you could use this kiln as a secondary kiln or even a bench kiln while you have a bigger kiln like this as the whole studio kiln. Some of the nice things about the Paragon F-130 are that one, it uses regular 120 power. You're gonna need a special outlet and a dedicated circuit, but you're probably not gonna need an electrician. You can probably do this all yourself and just have this size kiln going on a regular 120 outlet. It has a nice rod rest that comes in and out so that you can put your pieces with blow tubes and hold that there. And this will go up and down and in and out, which is a great feature because you're gonna be working in multiple sections pretty soon in your glass blowing career. You're gonna start off with one section and then you're gonna to start to build more and more complex pieces. And I like to think of it a little bit like Legos. Like you're gonna build these parts and then put them together. This kiln will definitely do that for you. And it has a kitty door. So you're gonna be able to slide pieces in. And with this one, like some of the other ones, if your piece is outside of the parameters of this door, you can open the kiln, put your piece in, close it with your blow tube, and then close the door. And that'll still allow you to work on bigger pieces uh, with a smaller kitty door. The Paragon kilns don't have the automatic annealing cycle built in. They can do those annealing cycles, but you will have to program it and understand a little bit more about how the computer works on the Paragon line of kilns. Some final thoughts on the Paragon F-130 is that this is a great starter kiln that's a little bit more budget friendly and should last a long time, as opposed to the really budget ones, which you may outgrow pretty fast. This would definitely work, and if you're on a budget and looking for something that's a little bit more of a professional level kiln, this might be one that you might wanna think about. The next kiln that we're gonna talk about is the Paragon F240. This is a 240 kiln again, uh, like some of the other ones we've talked about. It's powerful and it's big and it's got a lot of room to work. So you can see like, just like some of the other ones, you have a lot of room to work. This one is a little bit deeper. You can put more pieces from front to back because of the depth of this kiln. This kiln also has the kitty doors that open up and they attach to the top and they have quite a bit of room for you to work in and out of the kiln. One thing you might wanna consider is these doors when they're open and your piece is slightly out of the parameters to fit in, you can open up the door, slide your piece in, and then close the door over your blow tube. The Paragon is a little bit more affordable than the Scuts, but it does give you a similar sort of working environment as a Scut. The Scut has a slightly different controller that doesn't have the ramping technology built in that the scut has. So when you're turning your kiln on and off, if you would like a full annealing cycle, you're going to have to program that in yourself and use that. So it's gonna take a little bit more technical savviness on your part, but you could accomplish everything that you can in one of the bigger kilns with this Paragon F240. Paragon's been around for a long, long time. They're a reputable company and their kilns are good quality. They even add extra little rod rests on top and a rod rest here so that the kiln can hold on to your work as you're using it. A couple final thoughts on the Paragon is that this is a great kiln if you're looking for something on a professional level that's a little bit more affordable than the very top end kilns in the industry. I would recommend this for many people under a lot of circumstances. It's got a lot of room and it's gonna be pretty easy to use. Keep your work at the right temperatures and make sure that you're able to produce the highest quality work that you can do. Let's talk about scuts, you guys. Scut kilns are the standard of the industry. Every professional glassblower either wants this kiln or has this kiln in their shop. And it's for a good reason. 
This kiln was designed by a well-known lamp worker who has quite a bit of experience in the industry and knows what pipe makers and advanced glass blowers want. This kiln has a wonderful cantilever door that's counterweighted and makes it easy to open and close. And you can see all the room in this kiln. You can access this really easy. You put on some gloves. You can set a piece right in here. You can take a piece out very easily. You have a lot of room in this kiln. This kiln is the Scut Scarab. You can see that these doors open really nicely. They stay open and give you a lot of room to get your pieces in and out. You are, of course, like with any kiln, limited to the dimensions of the doors and the kitty doors, but there are not very many people that are gonna work larger than these parameters. I'm sure that you've seen that this is the kiln that I have in my studio. There's a couple of versions of this kiln. There's the Scut Scarab, which is this one. It's the largest one they're making currently. There's the Scut Scarab Mini, which is the ones that you see in my studio that's a little bit smaller than this. The Scut Scarab Mini, is about half the size of this kiln. So if you took this in half, that would be the Scut Scarab Mini. And the Scut Scarab Mini would most likely be the one that you would want if budget was not an issue for you. It's gonna be a kiln that'll last for your entire career. It's a kiln that multiple people can work out of and the parameters and the dimensions inside allow you to create a wide variety of work. The Scut kilns run on 240, except the Scut Scarab Micro, which runs on 120. So you'll need to consider that you may need to hire an electrician to look at your electricity and make sure that everything is safe, or maybe drop a 240 line for you guys to run the Scarab and the Scarab Mini. You can see that this is the Scut Scarab Mini, and this is the Scut Scarab Micro. They get smaller and smaller. All of these kilns are great quality, and they're gonna last a lifetime. So if you're looking for the best quality kiln for lamp working and pipe making, you would probably wanna consider a Scut. One of the things that's great about the Scut kiln is they have annealing cycles and striking cycles built right into the controller. It's very easy to use. There's just a couple of buttons. When you turn on your kiln, you just turn this on. You usually just press go, maybe stop and go, depending on what the last cycle was in your kiln. When you're done with your work, you can choose to anneal it. You can choose to strike and then anneal it. For those of you who are just starting off, these are terms that we'll get deeper into in some of the knowledge lessons that are on the online school. But keep in mind that this already has that built in. It already has the cycles built in. It's very easy to access. So it's another reason to consider why SCUT may be a good choice for you. So let me just show you a couple more features on the SCUT. These are across the board on all the SCUT lines, the Scarab, Scarab Mini and Micro. The doors are super smooth, easy to open. When you're done working, you can close this up all the way and seal it in so that the temperature stays in the kiln. You don't have any air or anything coming into the kiln to possibly create any cracks. It's a very good design. All these doors go up and do that. You can pull this rod rest in and out and up and down depending on what you're using and what kind of pieces are hanging out of the kiln. There was a lot of thought put into this kiln specifically for the pipe making industry. And if you're interested in making pipes, mini tubes, anything of a bigger scale, I think you might want to consider getting a scut kiln.